friends, you'll notice some numbers on the tolls. These are moisture readings, and unfortunately, a lot of moisture. I have high, high moisture readings. You got some 12s, some 9s, and some X's, and X's, and X's, just off the meter chart. <clears throat> you'll see in some previous videos what I did was cut out sections of the foam because you could stick your finger up in there and the foam was kind of like crumbly. You could you could just put your finger in there and crumble away the foam. It wasn't good. Yes, I could have just patched it over with epoxy fairing and called it good. Dried it out maybe, put a shot back on it, dried it out and put some epoxy fairing. I didn't need to do a significant amount of the repair work that I did do, but as I explained, to find a haul out for this boat is very costly in the U.S. and I found a very good cost-effective <coughs> haul out. <coughs> so why I'm on the hard, I'm just going to do the work the best I can. Try to do, make this haul uh, hey, the best it can for another decade or so. It'll last my lifetime because the next haul out will maybe be 9, 10 years like I said in an earlier video and then maybe another country. So, the reason I'm being so picky on these holes is because of the haul out. I'm here, might as well get the work done. I like the location, I'm happy with the location. Some nice people. Anyways, so what do we do? So in these holes I have 18s and some way off the charts, 35, 40, just totally in the red and the moisture reading. <clears throat> so these boats are made out of polyester. And the polyester, uh, when the water gets past the gel coat, and water can mix with some of that polyester chemicals, and you start to create uh, blisters. And that's kind of a short gift of blisters. There's other reasons. Any fact checkers out there will fact check me, I'm sure. <clears throat> but basically, what we want to do is turn everything to a gas inside. We want to evaporate uh, that moisture and the polyester chemical that's in there to basically dry these holes out the best we can, get down to a one or a two or zero would be great. How do we do that? Well, <clears throat> I have a hot vac system. Hot vac systems are popular in the UK, but you'll find them around. I could not get a hot vac system, but I did find a company, and I'll put a link down below when I show you the product. I had a company make me some silicone heating mats, and the silicone heating mats have a vacuum adapter to it. So when you put heat to your hole <coughs> and you put it under a vacuum, my boiling point is zero. Uh, at zero degrees, I get to a boiling point. Yeah, yeah. So that means I can turn everything into a gas in these holes uh, very quickly. I may need to drill some pinholes in here to do it, but I don't think I need to. This is a foam, and I think I can just put the heating mat up here and dry out these holes. That's a long process, unfortunately, to dry out all both sides' holes. Yes, both sides have high moisture reading. I'll show you those mats when I get them. I did have to custom order them and custom make them. Sounds costly, but it's not. Actually, it was cheaper to have your my silicone mats made than it was to actually rent a system, which here in Florida, I couldn't even find a system. I found one, I found a gentleman that was willing to rent me a system. Very nice guy. But it was higher than just go ahead and making one. <clears throat> the, the hot vac system that's in the UK. Uh, good luck trying to get that one over here. Yes, there's other solutions. Very creative people out there. And some of you can comment what you did. Such as <clears throat> putting a shop vac up here. Just running a shop vac for a period of time. Sucking out the moisture. That's... That's one option. Uh, I heard one person do a heat gun. Well, unfortunately it's my whole haul, so I'm not gonna put a heat gun to the whole haul. <laughs> so there's many solutions out there to dry out the holes. This is gonna be my process that I'm gonna do. Why? I said before, it's my boat. I do what I want. Hey friends, a change of scenery. No, haven't got a haircut yet, but we are, and I'm sorry for the glare, more or less, in the engine bay. My favorite place, not. All these massive wires, I kind of know where they go. That's not the problem. And the engine goes right here. That's not the problem. What the problem is? This is the rear bulkhead. 
the rear bulkhead. You may see some light back there. Yes. Got some holes. I need to go back there and patch them. And properly patch is from the inside out. So I want to get back there and patch those holes. But there's a second reason. That is for the swim deck that I'm going to be making. <clears throat> I want to add some stainless steel uh, backing plates. I want to glass that in up here for structural support. Third option is... This wood's pretty much rotten. So, <clears throat> water had gotten behind here, and the backside wasn't really, a, it wasn't ever epoxied. How could they epoxy? When they put it in here, they got to access this side. But it had gotten wet, and it is basically falling apart. Uh, that's unfortunate, but uh, those are the three re main reasons that I'm going to chop out this bulkhead. Get back there to replace the glass, put some structural backing in here for my swim deck, and also just put some brand new marine plywood back here. I'll epoxy the plywood uh, before I put it in. Uh, so it'll be, and I'll probably lay up some more glass up in here, uh, clean up. <clears throat> so it's a big job because this is actually very well made. Uh, they did a really good job of sealing this bulkhead in. Rightfully so, because this is a rear bulkhead to keep the water out. So if you were to put a, poke a hole in the back, uh, water wouldn't come in the engine bay. So this is actually very well done. Uh, so, unfortunately though, since it's very well done, and it's about three quarter uh, kind of rotten wood. If you ever try to chop out rotten wood, it is a pain. So, <clears throat> and with a catamaran, that's right, I got two bulkheads. Two. So I gotta do the other side as well. <clears throat> but, it gives me an opportunity to clean this up. I will uh, replace this exhaust hose, put some new exhaust hose, I'll get some new elbows in here. I mean, this is uh, plastic, which you can't see. Maybe you can. The plastic is pretty much rotten. There, I'll show you. Pretty much. Plastic is pretty much rotten, but I'm going to have some stainless steel uh, full elbows uh, made up, be uh, much better than what's here. I'll also replace this pipe with the uh, blue pipe, the more flexible, more durable <coughs> exhaust hose. So unfortunately this is going to take me all weekend, and then some maybe, because this is built very tough. So more power to the designers and builders of this boat. They did a really good job on this bulkhead, and rightfully so, because it is a watertight bulkhead. But you see the engine bay is actually quite nice when the engine's out. This this engine bay is actually very roomy. 